Wow, that was absolutely fantastic. What a great way to start our worship today. We want to welcome all of our third, fourth, and fifth grade students and their families and their teachers. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship today. For those of you I don't know yet, my name is Pastor Micah. And I'm Sarah. And we are just glad to welcome you to worship today. Prayer is a great way that we can connect with God through worship. And there are other ways as well. One of them we love is our Advent calendars and advent wreaths. So some of you have candles ready to go at home. You could do this now if you want as I light the four candles here. Uh, this is because it is this Sunday is the fourth weekend in Advent. So we light all four of these. Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. It's yeah. So the fifth here. candle sometimes people put in the middle is for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And uh, that helps remind us uh, that we're gathered in the presence of God for worship as well. All right. With that, let's start our service. And thank you so much to our third, fourth, and fifth graders and their teachers. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, whenever we gather for worship, we have a chance to confess our sins to God. He invites us to cast our burdens upon Him because He cares for us and to remove our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. So I invite you, wherever you are, to join with me in this prayer of confession. The words should be on your screen. God, God we, we are, are broken people. people. We, we confess, confess our shame, shame guilt, guilt, fear, and, and pain to you today. today. We, we desperately need, need the hope, peace, and forgiveness, and forgiveness only you can, can provide. provide. Forgive, Forgive us and bring, bring us healing. healing. Amen. Amen. Friends, I have good news, and that is that the whole reason for this Christmas season is that God has sent his son Jesus into this world to rescue and redeem and restore and forgive sinners like you and me. Amen. And so it delights him to announce his grace to you, and it, it's my privilege to declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because Christmas is almost here, because dancing fits so well with music, because babies are a miracle, especially the one born to Mary and Joseph. Rejoice! Because you are loved, because pain does not last forever, because Jesus lives and is coming again. Rejoice! Rejoice! Because of laughter, because there really are angels, because forgiveness is yours for the asking. Rejoice! Rejoice. Because the blind sees and the lame walks. Because miracles really do happen. Rejoice. Rejoice. Because of blessings. Because of children, parents, family. Rejoice. 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 Because the dead will live again. And there is good news for the poor. And good news for you and for me. Rejoice. rejoice. Because of Christmas. Because of Jesus. We rejoice. rejoice. Mary. She doesn't know it yet, but soon she'll become the mother of Jesus. Mary is getting ready to marry a man named Joseph. Mary and Joseph both lived according to God's law and wanted to do right in his eyes. One day, an angel came to Mary. Who are you? Please do not be afraid, Mary. I'm the angel Gabriel. I come to bring you good news. Good news for me? Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He will be the king forever. This news left Mary afraid and confused. She wondered what the angel was talking about, but decided to pray and trust that God would provide. Joseph heard that Mary was pregnant, and he was unsure of what to do. He sat down to pray and sort through all the thoughts in his head. Eventually, Joseph drifted off to sleep and was visited by the angel Gabriel. 
Joseph, do not be afraid, for the baby is from God, and he will save the people from their sins. Take Mary as your wife, and take good care of her and her son. Well, isn't that something? Mary, an angel came to me in my dream. Is it really true? What am I going to do? Where do I start? I don't, I can't. Joseph, just relax and let God do the rest. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem to be counted in the census. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, do you know how far we are from Bethlehem? You still have a long way to go, sir. Yeah, it's a long trip, probably 70 miles from here. Better gas up. Just head up there and turn left. Then head straight into you see signs for Bethlehem. Thank you. So Joseph followed the directions and continued on his way to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph traveled all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. When they arrived, they were tired and needed a place to stay. So they asked everyone they met if they knew of any place that had a room. Joseph, being in charge of the driving, didn't think he needed to stop and ask for instructions. After finally listening to Mary, he knew just where to find the inn for them to rest at. However, the friends they met on the way warned them that many people were in town for the census, and rooms might be hard to find. Bethlehem was very busy with everyone who had returned home. They stopped and checked with many houses only to be turned away time and time again. Mary was getting very uncomfortable from the long journey and was anxious to find a place to rest. Even though they continued to be turned away, Mary still trusted that God would provide. Joseph was feeling the pressure and was determined to find a place for Mary to rest. He explained to the innkeeper that they had traveled many miles and that his wife was very tired. He didn't have any room in his inn, but he did offer a stable back for them to rest. With no other options, Mary and Joseph decided that this was God's provision, so they settled in with the animals in the stable. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 and 22 through 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. What is when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together. She was found to be with the child from the Holy Spirit. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. same region, shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks. It was an ordinary night just outside of Bethlehem. Just an ordinary night. Just an ordinary night with ordinary shepherds watching over ordinary sheep. 53, 54, 55. Ah. All that to say, I asked her father, and he said no. Again? He said no. Again. This time he wasn't... Yelling at you? Throwing things? Screaming? He wasn't so sure. You said that last time. 
I know, but this time I think he wanted to say yes. He probably want to say anything to get you to stop and talk. I don't know why I keep asking him. We're shepherds! We're not exactly every woman's dream. Or every father's for that matter. You make it sound so hopeless. It is. He's got one daughter. He's not going to choose you. 65! 66! Stop! Ah. You're making my head hurt. They're all there. How can you tell? They're all the same. Do that job for another 30 years. They won't all look the same by then. You're in a good mood. What's there to be in a good mood about? Kid, we're shepherds. We don't get the girl. No father dreams of choosing a shepherd as son-in-law. Most people don't even make eye contact with us. Afraid if they get too close, they smell you. I don't smell. I can smell you from here. <laughs> Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For born unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Did you hear that? They were talking to us. Let's, Let's go! Hurry! He chose us. God chose to tell us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3:16. left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, that the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and located Mary and Joseph, and found the baby lying in a manger. When they saw him, they related what they had been told about this child. And all who heard were astonished at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured all these words, pondering her heart what they might mean. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Is this him, the king? Who are you? The angels came to us in the field. It was so bright, we were terrified. I think I wet my tunic. He looks just like his dad. Yeah, I can see it in his eyes. Please come in. Um, there's not really a place to sit, but... We weren't expecting company, but... I'm sorry the sheep fall is here. It's just the way we train them. It's okay, just don't let them bite. They don't bite. 
Sheep don't bite. Well, some do, but ours don't. At least I don't think so. Did you just spit? We're in a barn. 45, 46, 47, 50. Wait, oh no! Can I hold him? It's just, he's just an hour old and your hands don't look clean. It's fine. Two hands, please, he's two hands. It kind of has a ring to it. What does? Joy to the world. I think I'm gonna write a song about it. Who do you think you are, King David? What, King David was once a shepherd? After the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them. It finally stopped at the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There he is! He's in here! I can't believe we made it! We'll have been here sooner, but the clouds. And King Harold, Herod held us up for a bit, but that's a different story. Did you see the angels too? Angels? There are angels? I thought I was dreaming. No, it was real. For once you weren't sleeping when something important happened. There was no angel. We saw a star. Yeah, it was huge. No way you can miss it. Who are you? We saw the king's star not come to worship him. Can I hold him? He brought gifts. I knew we forgot something. This is chaos. This is not how a baby is supposed to be born, much less the king of kings. It does seem vain though, don't you think? What do you mean? This hectic night. The prophet said he would be a prince of peace, not a prince of chaos. If our world was in chaos, we wouldn't need the prince of peace. He didn't come to peace, he came to bring peace. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called uh, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. morning. My name is Pastor Randy and I'm one of the pastors here at St. Peter. You know, one of the things that I treasure about Christmas, even as an adult, is the giving and exchanging of gifts. I remember as a young child waking up early on Christmas morning and hurrying out to the Christmas tree and starting to go through all the presents, seeing especially whose name was on the gift tag. Just like this one here, I pulled from the tree this morning. It says, to Randy, from my sister in Florida who mailed these up here this week. And of course, no inspection was complete unless we looked at the big presence behind the tree and on the side of the tree and whose name was on the big presence. You know, I say this because every nativity set that I have seen is missing one key thing. The very first manger came with a gift tag. The angel declared to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That means the greatest Christmas present ever, the biggest Christmas present ever, has a tag and your name is on it. To you is born a Savior. So even if you're a smelly shepherd, this gift is for you. Merry Christmas. I want to take just some time to give you a couple questions to reflect on with those who you are with or to reflect on yourself. And my first question to you is this. What does it mean to you that God put your name 
on his gift tag. And my second question to you is who in your life do you know who needs to hear that baby Jesus is for them too? Go ahead and talk and then even pray about that now. for sending your son to earth to save us. Please help us to remember the true meaning of Christmas this season. Give us all a great Christmas as we remember what you have done for us. Amen. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus, your only son, to make us free from sin. Thank you for the joy that he brought. Thank you for being there for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, please comfort everyone who is sick or in the hospital. Protect all the staff members who were let go last year. Support all the scientists and doctors looking for a cure for COVID-19. Care for all the families with the flu. Give shelter to the homeless and keep America safe. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, please help COVID to go down and please keep our school, our community, our nation, and the world safe. Please help the scientists, doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, and please help them to keep us safe from COVID. Amen. Please join us in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, of the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello. Whatever circumstance you might be facing right now, or however long you might be in that rut, or however messed up you think your life might be, 
Jesus' arms are open for you. In fact, you know what his promise to you is in John 6. Jesus says, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. So if you would like to come to Jesus now and experience his joy and peace like never before, please say this prayer with us. Jesus, I am broken. Shame, guilt, and fear surround me. I need your peace in my life. I need your forgiveness for the sins that I can't remember and for the sins that I can't forget. Thank you for dying in my place. I desire to follow you. Amen. That's great news if you are already a follower of Jesus or you just said that because you want to come to Jesus. We want to help you walk with him. We have a place where you can click on in the chat, next steps. You can submit a prayer that we can pray with you now. Or we can also join one of our online community groups or even contact the church about being baptized. And know that this is incredible news that just Jesus is for you and wants to be in your life. There are three ways to give today. So if God is prompting you to be generous, take a look at your screen and you can give in any of these ways. Again, I just want to thank all of our girls and boys of our third, fourth, and fifth grades, the teachers and assistants for all of your work proclaiming this Christmas message to us. We were indeed blessed. And now we are all blessed if you want to open your hands to receive the very name of God upon you. As you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Merry Christmas.